Today we're ranking all of the third acts in the Scream movies. Let's get into it. What's your favorite scary movie? What's up, Killjoy Jake here, and instead of having friends, I have horror movies. Today, we are going to be ranking all of the third acts in all five of the Scream movies. Hopefully, we get another great one in Scream 6, of course. But today, we're going to be talking about the already pre-existing ones. And now, before I get into that, I'm going to need you all to like this video and subscribe for more horror content. Typically, I do news updates on here, but we really like talking about Scream. So today, we're ranking the third acts. I've said that multiple, multiple times. Actually, I said it three times third act. That's why I did it. So coming in the final spots in fifth place, last but not least, is Scream 2. Now, I already know many, many, many people will disagree with this, and that's totally fine, but I feel like the only human being on planet Earth that is not a big fan of Mrs. Loomis or Mickey. And why I say that is because I just feel like Mrs. Loomis is so over the top. She's one of my least favorite ghost face killers. I love Laurie Metcalf. No, no, nothing towards her. I, I mean, nothing, uh, no diss towards her at all. I just, she's so over the top, so silly compared to the previous movie where we had Billy and Stu being these seriously upsetting, horrifying characters. I think she's trying to play Stu Mocker a little more, which is odd because she's Billy's mom, so you think she would have a more like darker and serious approach to this role, but she doesn't. She she's really over the top. She's really goofy. There's that screenshot of her where it's like she's about to go and stab someone, and she she's screaming. I mean, that picture says it all. I think about how I feel about Mrs. Loomis. Just way too over the top for me personally. And Mickey, I love the idea of his character. Like one of the coolest concepts for a ghost face killer in any of the sequels by far. The problem is he's very wasted, and they don't give him enough screen screen time at all. He literally disappears from the movie about 45 minutes in. That's a massive problem for me. That's that's just poor writing, I think, on on that part. And I would I would, could have used more of him. He's a really interesting character. He's a serial killer that was recruited by Mrs. Loomis to be a ghost face killer to go after Sydney and her friends and and kill them. Awesome idea. Holy crap, but waste so much wasted potential. They should have focused everything on that. That is the sequel I wanted to see in Scream 2. Was focusing on this uh, a murderer who's already existing in Windsor and then goes after um, so, like uh, people who survived a previous killing spree. I want to compare Mickey real quick to a Spider-Man villain, which I know is a, a reach, but I, I think that this is this. I have a point to make with this. There's a Spider-Man villain called Craven the Hunter, who you've probably heard of at this point because I guess they're making an entire movie based around the character because he's a really great villain in my opinion. I think he's really interesting and. The whole point of his character is that he's a hunter. He's like this master class hunter taking down like every kind of animal you can possibly think of. And then now he sets his sights to Spider-Man. He wants to take down Spider-Man because it's like, it's nothing personal. It's just, he wants to, he he's a hunter. He wants to take down, Sp he wants to be the one to take down Spider-Man because he thinks that's cool. What if you apply that same motive to Mickey Altieri in, in Scream 2? How much cooler of a film that would have been if Mickey's motive, if he was the only ghost face killer, was just to take down Sydney and her friends because they survived the ghost face killings in, Win in, in Woodsboro? How cool would that movie have been? I just, I can't get over how much cooler that would have been if they would have went that route instead of Billy's mother being the killer. Eh, I don't know. Just just not a fan of this third act at all. The set is really cool, actually. The the setting is one of the coolest. It's like literally on the play that Sydney's in. That's that's like the setting of the third act. That's awesome. The reveal is just not not great to me. I'm not a fan of the killers in Scream 2. But moving forward, probably the, the hardest part of making this video was deciding what was going to be in places 3 and 4 because I already knew my 1 and 2. This, this was really tough, um, but what I'm going with for fourth place is Scream 4. And this was, this is, because the, the next one, I feel like they're neck and neck with how I feel about uh, the next two. But in Scream 4, I love both the killers, surprisingly. I, I know I recently listed Charlie as my least favorite Ghostface killer, but that's just because he doesn't have enough screen time. He, he dies really early on, and he doesn't do a whole lot of crazy stuff besides his reveal. His reveal when he stabs Kirby is really well done. I thought, I thought that was really cool. I thought it was going in a completely other direction, and th that was a shock to me. I liked that. That, that was well written, and it's just a cool scene overall. And now that Kirby's alive, also really cool. 
Um, the other thing, I really like Jill as a killer. She's one of my favorite, the Jiller killer, as I like to uh, call her on this page. One of my absolute favorite Ghostface killers. She is just so crazy and just a lemon-scented evil that we need more of in this franchise. Absolutely loved her and her performance from Emma Roberts. F phenomenal all around. My one thing about Scream 4 that sucks, though, is this third act goes on for forever. I mean, it just doesn't stop. We <laughs> Jill gets taken away in an ambulance, and we have this another, like, five, six, seven minute long scene at a hospital, which just feels so tacked on and unnecessary to me. I feel like this Scream 4 was supposed to have this cliffhanger ending that would have led into a 5. I would have loved to have seen that fleshed out and then to have the Radio Silence movies today. That would have been awesome. But uh, unfortunately, of course, the Weinsteins were not a fan of that and of course uh, Wes Craven unfortunately passed away four years later after this movie came out so that just wasn't going to wasn't going to happen it wasn't in the cards unfortunately but I just feel like this hospital scene feels very ta tacked on it's it's a bit of a drag it goes on forever I, I just I don't I don't love it it's not it's not my favorite part of, of any of the screen movies unfortunately uh, and also the whole the the clear line is unbelievably cheesy like even for the screen movies unbelievably cheesy but uh, moving forward, coming in third place in, is Scream 5, and like I said, Scream 4 and Scream 5, are their third acts are about neck and neck for me. I, th I have a lot of pros with them and a lot of cons. I literally had to list out pros and cons because I didn't know how to rank them. That, that is how, how difficult this was. But I just had one less con for Scream 5's ending than I did for Scream 4. That is how, how neck and neck they are. <laughs> so that's the only reason it's in third place. <clears throat> My thing about uh, the Scream 5 ending is actually very different from uh, how I feel about Scream 4's ending. I love Amber's reveal. Like, one of the coolest Ghostface reveals in the entire franchise. I didn't see it coming. Totally got me. Great job, Guy Busick and James Vanderbilt, who wrote this script. But... I saw Richie coming from a mile away. That was the that was painfully obvious. I, I knew that was coming, and the fact that they actually made him the killer, I was pretty disappointed by. That was, wow. And then they try to convince you that it's Tara, the person who's been bedridden this entire movie, the person who is the sister of the main character. No way. Not gonna happen. That's just not the case here. I knew Richie was the killer from the pretty much the very beginning, and then at that point, it was like, yeah, okay, that's painfully obvious. Cool. And then they try to make this reveal. I don't know. I, I didn't love that. That's... That kind of is why I, I set this one lower. I, I probably would have made this one fourth, honestly. But like I said, there was just more pros for the ending, I think. One of the biggest things I love about the Scream 5 ending is how both of the killers die. Like, some of the coolest kills in that entire movie are how the killers die. Oh my god, like, Amber getting lit on fire? Holy fuck, let's go. Yeah, yeah, baby, I'm all about that. Holy shit, that ending was awesome, and her comeback, her resurrection is, is awesome as well. Oh, the burnt face makeup? Love it. Chef's kiss, amazing. Uh, Sh Richie dying, getting just brutally massacred by <laughs> Sam Carpenter. Fuck yes. Oh my god, the stab through the cheek and, and everything is just, oh, well, so well done. That is, I think that's what separates that from Scream 4 for, for me, is that the kills of the killers are just so well done and some of the best of maybe the entire franchise. Some of the coolest, most creative kills uh, were at the ending of that, that film. Absolutely loved it. Another diss I have for Scream 5, though, real quickly that I want to go over and then I'll move on, is the kitchen scene just feels way too reminiscent of the original. It's really trying to be Billy and Stu at the ending here, and Amber and Richie are just not them. They're good. I like both of them. They're some of my favorite Ghostface killers. Not my absolute favorite, though, and especially because of the Richie reveal that definitely lowers this one down a peg. But moving forward into my second place, who's getting the silver? It's Scream 3, baby. Scream 3's ending is easily one of my favorite parts of that entire film. Roman no, Roman's reveal is done very well and actually has a surprisingly well done mystery element considering how goofy this movie is. Now, I, you, I'm sure you guys know how I feel about Scream 3 at this point. I feel like it's the only Scream film that isn't really based in reality where all of the other ones really do have that sense of reality. And it, it really feels like these are your friends dealing with this problem. And I know I'm going to have someone in the comments saying, well, the Scream movies aren't realistic. How many people would dress up in a ghost face mask and go kill someone? Well, let, like, you're just not having any, f any fun with these franchises then. This is much more realistic than Michael Myers walking around taking like 50 gun sh gunshots to the face and still walking around murdering people. So, th yeah, this movie is much more rooted in reality in comparison to other slasher franchises. Fight me. 
I absolutely love I, I really love the ending of Scream 3, though. Easily my favorite part, like I said. The Roman reveal is done very well. The mystery el element, surprising re su surprisingly really well done. And we get this wonderful ending for Sidney Prescott. Which is why I think a lot of people do love Scream 3, is because of the super happy ending. And this it, it feels like the return of the king of the Scream franchise. And I, can, I totally understand the love for it. Like I said, I find the film to be a bit goofy and, and way cheesier than some of the other films. So that's why I, I think overall as a film, I'm not the biggest fan of Scream 3. But at that ending, really well done and masterful. Easily the best of any of the sequels, I'd say. Crazy, I know. Controversial. The guy who has trash-talked Scream 3 all this time loves the third act the most of all the sequels. But obviously in first place, has to be Scream. Come on. I mean, that ending is just phenomenal. Billy and Stu are the best ghost face killers. Easily, I think they're the most... Cr they both have their own personality, and they both play crazy in totally different ways, which is a really big plus, and they both do it really well. Every other killer in the past has always had a counterpart that I didn't like as much as the other one. For Mickey to Mrs. Loomis, uh, Jill to Charlie, Amber to... Well, okay, I actually really like Amber and Richie, but they're not as good as Billy and Stu. They're, they are a more consistent team than some of the people in the sequels, but Billy and Stu will always be the best, I think, just because of how well they both play different sides of being a, a lunatic. Uh, the stabbing each other scene is horrifying. It's one of the, it, the, there's two scenes in that movie that really scare me. It's the opening and when they're stabbing each other. If I was Sidney Prescott in that scene, I would be pissing my pants. That is horrifying to watch two people like stab each other to try to blame the, uh, like blame uh, the other people for murder. That's, oh God, I just get the heebie-jeebies thinking about that. It's, it's awesome. F phenomenal. F phenomenal ending. And it's iconic. It's the only it's the only ending that I feel like is super iconic, has these lines of dialogue that are super quotable. The the peer pressure. Like, I love that. Oh, God. Stu Mocker is just just the best. And one, one of my favorite killers. It's, it's really one of the best horror films of all time, and that's why. It just has this crazy strong ending. It, it's a really fun film. So, that's how I feel about the third acts of the Scream movies, but how would you rank them? Obviously not the same as me, and that's totally fine. That's what's great about this horror space that we live in. We all have different opinions, and we can all express them nicely to one another. So don't be crapping on someone else's movie opinion. If someone wants to say the Scream 2 ending is their absolute favorite, awesome! Hell yeah! Good for you! I'm so glad you like it. That's what I say. So, much love to everyone and their ranking. Please put them in the comment section below. And be nice to other people in the comment section who may have a different opinion than yours. That's totally fine. It's not a big deal. We all have different opinions. If we all had the same opinion, that would fucking suck. Why would I make this video then? Like, it would just be like, oh, everyone knows what's what if we all had the same opinion. Yeah, we all, <laughs> there'd be no point in making this video. That'd, that'd be no fun. So leave that in the comments below. How do you guys feel about my ranking? Does it suck? Uh, you know, make fun of me. If you want to make fun of someone, make fun of me because I just don't give a shit. Uh, thank you all again for watching this crazy ranking video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more horror content where I'll be doing updates on Scream 6. If you're interested in, in keeping up with that, subscribe to this page. That's what we do here. We we do updates on upcoming horror movies. Uh, also, please, if you can, support me over on Patreon. I'm about to go full-time as a content creator and I am nervous. So <laughs> make sure to support me on Patreon. We're going to be doing a video once a week there plus some other or early release stuff and a whole bunch of other bonuses. You can get exclusive merch over there as well. Go check it out. Just the link, link for that is in the description below. Check that out. Thank you all again for watching. And as always, don't forget to kill it out there, y'all.